Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Service Academy Insiders. I'm your host today, Captain Trish Dock, and I'm here to talk to you about how to get into the Naval Academy. But first, let's take a step back. You might not be familiar with all the different service academies. There are actually five. The Naval Academy, West Point, the Air Force Academy, and then two of the lesser known service academies, the Coast Guard Academy and the Merchant Marine Academy. So the Naval Academy is one of the most popular service academies with a really rich history of legacy and tradition. It was established in 1845, so it's the second oldest uh, service academy in the United States. So whenever we talk about any service academy, we want you to think about one model, and that's the scholar-athlete leader model. And this model is how Naval Academy admissions is going to look at you as a candidate. So first, let's talk about the scholar aspect of that model. Strong academics are a crucial component for success at the Naval Academy. And with that in mind, you want to maintain a really good high GPA during high school and rank well in your class if your class does rank students. So challenging yourself with AP, IB, and honors classes to just show that you're going to be capable and, and successful at the Naval Academy. Next, you're going to need competitive SAT, ACT scores. And pay special attention to the 75th percentile when looking at these scores. For the Naval Academy, that's about a 710, 730 SAT verbal or a 720 to 750 SAT math. And that's also a 32 math ACT um, or a, a 66 combining English and reading. So just pay attention to that and making sure that you're testing early and often throughout your high school career. It's a good thing. It's a good idea to send your scores into the Naval Academy, multiple scores as you're testing, because continuing to test shows them that you're dedicated and that you, you have perseverance and you're going to follow through. Your SAT and ACT scores are arguably the single most important factor under your control. But a factor that really does play a huge role in your admissions is your congressional district and where you live geographically. So we've created a congressional deep dive video to help you just understand how this impacts your chances, and you can watch that here. Also in the scholar route is your teacher recommendations and evaluations. So making sure that you have strong relationships, especially with your junior year teachers, because you are required to submit teacher evaluations from junior and senior year. So just paying attention to that, staying involved in class, you know, being a team player throughout your classes is important. Now let's move on to the athlete component. Being physically fit is a huge uh, key aspect that the admissions team is going to be looking at. And they are going to be looking to make sure that you're going to be successful. So one of the things they're going to look at is the candidate fitness assessment. And six events that you'll be tested on are the basketball throw, pull-ups, sit-ups, crunches, push-ups, and a one-mile run. And the Naval Academy is really unique in that they let you keep testing throughout the admission cycle. So take advantage of that and work to max out uh, each event. And I'm going to throw the CFA scores up on the screen so you can see what your max are by your gender. We also have a calculator that can help you estimate how to improve your scores. And there's gonna be a link for that in the description of our video below. Overall, just keep pushing yourself and don't give up, don't settle. Nearly 95% of all appointees and midshipmen have varsity sports participation. So that's about 80% having at least one varsity letter. It's very important that you participate in sports. And not only does it show that you're physically fit, it shows that you're a team player and potentially even a leader. So getting involved in team sports early on in your high school career career is very important for the, the admissions team. And that kind of transitions really well into the leader. So the Naval Academy is looking for future leaders of the Navy. So they're looking for certain characteristics and traits that they want to see in their candidates, their appointees, their midshipmen, their graduates. Integrity, teamwork, but you can always go back to Navy's core values, which are honor, courage, and commitment. And so what you should be doing throughout your high school career is getting involved in activities and extracurriculars, clubs, communities that you are passionate about and that you, you you're a stakeholder in. Because getting involved, right, if you're going to volunteer, for instance, that's, it's not enough to just volunteer. You need to get involved in an organization 
you know, throw yourself into that organization and then eventually take on a leadership role. The Naval Academy wants to see that you have experience leading others, that you've been successful, that you've you've had failures as a leader and you've learned from those failures and you're, you've improved. So your ability to discuss those throughout the entire application cycle will become very apparent. And if you haven't taken any risks and if you haven't gone out and tried to lead others, that will be apparent as well. So start now. Now that we've covered the scholar athlete leader model, let's talk about the application process. You're going to need a congressional nomination to be considered for a Naval Academy appointment, and you should apply for at minimum your three members of Congress, which includes your local representative and your two senators. You know, reaching out to your local representative and your senators early and building positive relationships without them, th with them throughout the entire process. Don't wait until the last minute to submit your nomination application. Get it in early and make sure that you're prepared and practicing for your congressional nomination interview, because that is one of the most important ways in which members of Congress choose students to nominate to the Naval Academy. Another really important part of your Naval Academy application is DODMERP, and that stands for the Def Department of Defense Medical Examination Review Board. And this process just makes sure that you're medically qualified for the Naval Academy and for service. We recommend initiating this process as early as possible. The Naval Academy application opens up every April during your junior year, and Dodmer won't start until you submit the second half of your application, which means that you've submitted your personal statement and your extracurriculars and all of your uh, re letters of recommendation, at least sent them the, the form for that. So we've created a whole video on the Dodmer process, which you can watch here to get more information on the process overall, and also if you need to overcome a medical disqualification. And finally, is your blue and gold officer and working with your BGO for short. Now, you'll be assigned a blue and gold officer as soon as your application opens up in April. And it's very important that you reach out with them and you establish a, a communication with them and let them know what's going on throughout your application process. Because eventually, once you submit the second half of your application, you'll be sitting down and conducting about an hour to an hour and a half long interview with them, where they're going to ask you about your motivations for, for attending the Naval Academy, for being a Naval officer, and basically just making a judgment as to whether or not you're going to be able to hack it, not only as a midshipman, but as a naval officer eventually. Remember, every time anyone is looking at you from the admissions panel, yes, they're looking at you for the Naval Academy, but they want to, they're want they thinking about, is this person going to be a good naval officer? When they commission as an ensign, are they going to make a great officer? So that's the key thing to keep in mind. Be genuine. Be confident and prepared for your interview and have a thorough understanding of what you want to do in the Navy and potentially what you want to study at the Naval Academy. That's going to help you prepare for your BGO interview. So to recap everything we've talked about, focus on your profile through the scholar athlete leader model, and that's going to help you become a competitive candidate for the Naval Academy. Start preparing early. Don't, don't hesitate to reach out for more insight and help, talk to midshipmen, talk to graduates, talk to former and current Naval officers for more information. So thanks for watching and good luck on your journey to the Naval Academy. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video for more helpful videos. Until next time.